Hello. Welcome to the 2023 Innovation Competition. Today we have some surprises and fun events planned. Um, we have some celebrity judges that are taking the stage as we speak. So, with no further ado, I'm going to introduce our judges. We have Tom Laws. He is CEO and President of, oh, excuse me, University of Finley CFO, retired, and Cooper Tire and Rubber com, uh, Company Executive. We have Kelly Bibler, owner of Golden Pair Voice and Image, and we have Eric Stoller, who is a assistant professor of business in the College of Business here at the University of Finley. Before we get started, we're going to have Kirby Overton, who is the dean of the College of Business, come up and speak a couple of um, nice words about our competition and introduce herself briefly. So if you could welcome our judges and Kirby Overton. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us tonight. As uh, Ms. Treadway mentioned, my name is Kirby Overton. I'm the Dean for the College of Business. This event is a very special and exciting event that we hold every year. Um, the, it originated in 2016 and we have had, it's been an annual event with the exception of a COVID year, um, which we just don't, we don't count that anyway. But we have, with Carla taking over, we have added some great initiatives and great opportunities for students to explore different avenues and, and have the opportunity to flex their entrepreneurial and innovative thinking. So last year she added the high school um, the high school category. And this year we have high schoolers representing Corey Rawson and Lipsick High School. So we are very excited to welcome you to campus. We also have, as she mentioned, our guest judges. So thank you again for joining us this evening and participating in this event. Um, so, or, sorry, not guest judges, celebrity judges, because you're all celebrities in my mind. Um, so thank you again, Tom, Kelly, and Eric for participating in this event. So this event is sponsored by the Garner Trucking Entrepreneurial Endowment. We're able to hold this event and feed you, provide prizes, and everything from this endowment. So I know that um, Sherry Br Garner Brumball was not able to be present with us tonight, but this endowment was started by her dad. He was a big supporter of the university, and and he really held College of Business very dear to his heart. So we were very grateful that before his passing, he started this endowment and um, gave us this opportunity to provide this platform for our students and for high schoolers now as well. So please enjoy. Um, if you have any questions about the university, about the College of Business in general, please feel free to ask myself, uh, again, Eric Soler is an assistant professor here, and then we have Dr. Jacqueline Schalk in the back as well, and Ms. Treadway, who can answer any questions about College of Business for you. So enjoy the show, and we are excited to get started. Thank you, Thank you Kirby. Thank you very much. All right, so a few things before we get started. A quick review of how this process is going to work. Um, if you notice on your program, we have them segregated into high school, um, green initiative, and the innovative business uh, section. So first will be the high schoolers. They'll have four minutes to have their presentation. Um, they all have the ability to have PowerPoint or any kind of presentation available that they would like. Um, after those four minutes, which if you hear a kind ding, Go ahead and do that for us, Christopher. That means that your four minutes is up. So you would very quickly come to a close and then we'll have three minutes for our judges to ask questions that um, you can clarify, you can answer or elaborate your, um, your plan with. So after that process, we'll have the high schoolers complete and there will be a short intermission where you can either grab a snack um, and or a drink and we'll let the judges tabulate their scores. Once those scores are completed, then the next initiative will come up, which will be the green initiative. So that's how we are gonna run on tonight. Um, a bit of housekeeping, if you need to use the restroom, out in the hall, um, and if you have any phones, if you could kindly just turn them off or down, that would be great. All right, so, first up, here we go. First on the schedule is Michaela Oman. She is a junior from Corey Rawson, Ohio.
Hi, as she said, my name is Michaela Oman. I'm a core Russian junior, and I'm extremely excited to be here. Um, today, um, I'm going to be explaining the Southern Ways Clothing and Accessories Business Plan. Um, our target market is newborn to adults. Um, our uh, starting capital is 150000 and that's just an estimate. Our goal for the Southern Ways Corporation is to partner up with name brand, name brand companies so that we can provide customers with products they desire. Um, one way we are different, we are a one-stop shop. So you come to our shop and you any product that you could ever imagine is there. Um, our product expansion is that in the future we would like to add home decor and possibly more locations. Our products are clothing for men, women, and children of all ages. Um, accessories are boots, hats, belts, jewelry, and show tack. And our name brands that we are going to be carrying are Hey Dudes, Wranglers, Ariat, Carhartt, Sylvan Supplies, and Twisted X's. And um, we are also going to be selling generic brands. So you have your name brands that have more expensive items, and then you get to your generic brands that have lesser expensive items so that everyone can afford our store. Our next um, Cup, or our next part is our partnerships. Um, these are personalized products. Um, Cowboss, they have belt buckle or belt buckles, um, tumblers, and as you can see, gems for um, necklaces. Um, that's actually my class buckle. And long, tr long tree, uh, long tree leather works. They have belts to where you can customize them to your initials, your name, whatever you would desire. Our location is going to be Finley, Ohio, um, areas with lots of traffic for visibility, easy access to park, affordable, and room to grow. Now with this, we would like to expand out into a couple more locations. Also, we are going to have an online website to where you can go across, or people can, customers can buy across the US. Marketing strategy, we are going to have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, radio station, sponsor local events such as county fairs and livestock shows. Email and text, and we are going to um, rely a lot on word of mouth. Attention grabbers, we would like to put a uh, boot on top of our building so it would invite more people in and, and attract them more. Influencers, country singers, and winners of, really t of reality TV shows and many more. Our competitors are TSC, Buckle, RP, RP Home and Harvest, and Family Farm and Home, and then an online competitor that we have is Rods. What sets us apart? Um, other competitors, they offer some of the basic items and are very little in the variety to where we were going to be very high in our variety of objects that we offer. Um, they mainly carry only the expensive names, name brands, which means we are going to be carrying both name and generic. They are more focused on work where they workwear and not work and fashion wear, which we will have. Are there any questions? Michaela. <clears throat> That's a great job with the slides. Uh, Thank you. Really sends the vibe for what you want to accomplish with your, with your uh, retail operation. So that was really, really good. Uh, one of your slides you said, uh, so we can provide customers with the products that they desire. And then the other slide it was like, uh, you're talking about the things that the other stores only provide the basics and not uh, providing more of the fashion aspect of it. So how did you measure that? Because that, that's really the key is the target market. So how did you measure how big 
and how big of a problem that is for consumers that are then going to look for an alternative with, with your store. Uh, the question was asked how big of a um, measurement of that is. Um, my, um, I am a big 4 H'er and FFA'er. I am very involved in that. And I know that when I go to like to show my animals, it's really hard to find op the, my style that I'm looking for. Um, that's what I'm really trying to do here. Are there any other questions? I just want to say from a marketing standpoint, you did a great job of covering um, a lot of those areas so much that I think you answered my question. Um, I was going to ask a little bit about like different marketing opportunities, and it looks like you're covering social media really well. Um, you talked about tapping into um, some of the local markets. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about sponsorships. If you had any idea of uh, where you want to hone in those sponsorships at so that you can try to pull in customers both online and to your store. Um, the question was asked where I uh, sponsor. Um, I would do a lot of with our community because I feel like sponsoring our community, building the heart of our community is very important. Um, I would just sponsor a lot of the FFA and 4-H shows and activities because those are my main like target market, I'd say. Are there any questions? Great job. Uh, I just had a question of what made you select Finley to ha have this location? Um, Finley, you know, you look around and you see a lot of boutiques, but there are no West, there's not very many Western boutiques. If I want to go find something, I have to go online, and you know how long that takes to get. If I need something the next day, kind of screwed on that. So, <laughs> any other questions? If not, thank you for your time and attention. All right, thank you, Michaela. Next, we have Mia Valdez. She's a freshman from Lipsick High School, and she noted that what inspired her was to join, or to join the competition was her interest in entrepreneurship and to compete at a little bit higher level here at the college. So Mia, come on up. Thank you for inviting me to come and present my innovative business idea. I'm here to present Repurpose for a Reason. The overview of the business plan is purpose of the company, business structure, pricing, target market, marketing, and outlook and competitors. The purpose of this company is that and that it benefits mo both the suppliers and the consumers. The suppliers are the people and local citizens who donate things to the company, which will be the inventory. Suppliers will get the stuff out of their closet that if they do not need or want the clothing anymore. They may be moving to a different town or may have students that have recently graduated from the school district, or they may just have a surplus of clothing from that school in their closet. Consumers will benefit from this if they just move to the district or have children entering the school sports. The, the um, mission statement for this is to repurpose spirit wear, where donations turn into a positive impact into the community. And the vision is to implement this business into other bigger school districts and have a wide variety of these stores. The business structure. The materials needed will be bins to set around town and collect the clothing. Other materials will be cleaning supplies to wash the clothes such as detergent. The display tables will be used to sell the clothes off of. The preparation for this business will be to check the bins that are set around the town, collect the clothes inside the bins, wash the clothes, and fold them into piles according to their size. 
pricing on this clothing is cheap enough for newcomers to buy spirit clothing to buy the spirit clothing. All clothes are under twenty dollars, so it's very affordable. The target market will be parents with children going into school approximately 2 to 18 years old, so this will range from about kindergarten to seniors within the school district. While consumers are targeted mostly, suppliers also need to be targeted for the advertising, for they are the fuel of the business and inventory. These are families who may have had children graduate and they don't need the apparel anymore. Marketing. Advertisement will reach people new to the area and may need the clothing. They may not be as better off as some of the families in the area. People who are leaving so they can donate. This marketing will be implemented by social media such as Facebook or Instagram since people are now very prone to doing that. Flyers will be handed to students K through 12 to get the news of the business out to their families. People will see these ads and donate and give feedback back to the community. Outlook and competitors. This business is unique because there are zero companies who solely exist and that are similar to this business. Competitors are goodwill and once upon a child, but this business is different because we solely look at spirit wear from that school district and when you're in Goodwill they sell home decor and a whole bunch of clothing that could not be specific to what you're looking for. For the profit it will be going to the community and whether that be new improvements to the town or donations schools or donations to the schools for people who can't afford lunches. Uh, this business will start out small, but once it gets put into bigger school districts, the income could, or it, the income will hopefully go up quite a bit. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Uh, me again. Thank you for for coming and doing this great job. Uh, so you would. It, for let's say it's Lipsick High School, they would only take Lipsick uh, wear with with the Lipsick logos and, and the purple and, and gold. Yes, that uh, is correct. Right? So you yeah. would not accept anything that had University of Michigan on it. No. Good. That's. I just want to make sure. You're not taking that. <laughs> that was more of an opinion. <laughs> Good. I just want to make sure you're not taking Michigan here. So. Uh, one of the advantages that, that your competitors have, because I think you said you're going to take the profits and you're going to basically kind of give that back to the community, right, into the school. So technically, you're, you're going to be a nonprofit. Correct. Because uh, you're not taking anything for yourself. And one of the advantages that the, uh, the Goodwills have is that they're considered tax-free. So they, anybody who donates goods to the Goodwill gets a tax deduction. And so that would be one advantage where people <clears throat> may be more inclined to give their goods to the goodwill as opposed to yours because you'd have to set yourself up as a tax-free organization to give them a, just a little statement and then they can deduct it from their taxes. So maybe not a question, but just something you might want to consider to set yep. yourself up as a tax-free so you can give that same advantage. And that way you're assured of getting the supply of goods from, from the donors. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. I love this concept. It's very unique. Um, I did have a question um, from the marketing aspect. Um, I think you have already looked into some good ideas, but I was wondering, um, I had a couple questions. The first question was, um, have you looked at all in using the school district itself to market your service and your products? Like as in putting up posters like around walls and stuff? Yes. I have not, but that that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that would be the best way to reach people in need in that particular district because you're really narrowing in on just people in that district because yes. that's what your product is. Mm -hmm. um, so that or if they have email communications that go out um, using that because they're already set up for you. They're already set up to take sponsorships and advertisements. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
My second question was around um, the cleaning and the collecting of that. Um, who would be responsible for collecting all of the items and then getting them cleaned and turned around in order for them to be out there for sale? Uh, there would be like a committee or like the staff for the business and then uh, there could be like a local family and consumer science room in the school that could be used for the washer and dryer and then if not there could be a committee inside of that committee and they could uh, like volunteer to take the clothing, clothing home and then they could wash it there. All right, thank you. Yes. Yeah, great job. Um, I think it's a, it's a really good idea for schools and uh, some of my coworkers would know that I've been labeled the branding police uh, around campus and don't really like people wearing other schools' clothing in my, in my classroom. Um, so I, th I think it, it's a great idea. What would be the incentive for maybe somebody to donate if you're not, I'm not Mr. Accounting and, and know the, the tax benefits and I don't know if too many high school kids would be like, yes, tax break. Um, but what would be the incentive? Would you have an incentive to try and get the students to donate? Um, I think it would just be the fact that they would know that their clothing is benefiting the people inside of their community and just that it's going towards a good cause. Thank you. All right, one division down. So we're getting a little bit closer to those university students. I see them eagerly thinking about their topics. Um, right now we have a short intermission where I'm supposed to wing it and kind of take some time. I did bring some jokes. You want to hear a joke? Kirby asked for it. All right. Did you hear the rumor about butter? Well, I'm not going to go around spreading it. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Thanks, Kirby. Um, no, really, at this time, as the judges are going to tabulate these scores and they decide, you know, first and second place with this, um, I do want to say that I had advertised for winnings to be under a certain dollar amount of $500. But um, with some changes to the competition, adding the high school, and, you know, she mentioned a COVID year, we do have a dollar amount that's higher than that. So, we are going to announce all the winners at the end of the competition, and the high schoolers are going to be winning $1,000 for the first place and $750 for the second. So hopefully that makes you even more excited for them to be announced after our intermission and next two divisions to be had. So with that said, are you guys still eagerly thinking? Counting. We guys don't need to add. We have students my students in my marketing class who are all in the back, thank you for volunteering. They do get a grade for this. Um, they're not volunteering then, are they? They're gonna collect an ad and they're going to add again. So if you guys wanna add, you can. Otherwise, let's get ready for our second division. So as Graham comes up and is going to steal away those scoring sheets and take it off for tabulating. I feel like they're going to take an order at the table, and she said, take theirs first. So the next division is really the green initiative, and it's something that's become more apparent as a teacher, um, not a parent as a mom, but a parent around the college. We've had uh, bins for recycling that have been added in our College of Business um, that I've noticed. I know that there are students who are having recycling initiatives happening. So when I added this division, it's clearly because it's becoming more forefront and people are paying more attention to what's happening in the world. Um, so I'm really glad that we had some entries. Um, there are two entries in the green initiative. So as the judges change mindset of this is the green initiative, this is something that's going to help reduce that carbon uh, footprint, help our earth, be good for everyone, right? Um, I'll get the go ahead, some eye contact. I think our judges are ready. Celebrities, are you ready? All right, I got the thumbs up. All right, so first, we have our green initiative coming up is Kelsey Campbell. She's a junior and mar junior marketing major at the University of Finley. And she entered into this contest to get out of her comfort zone and to show herself that she's capable of achieving, achieving big things. So, Kelsey. Oh, 
Okay, well good evening. Today I'm going to be presenting the estuary project. Um, like a natural estuary where fresh water and salt water meet, my goal and mission for this business is to educate people who are interested in sustainability and want to integrate eco-friendly goods into their daily lives but aren't really sure how to do that without going full sustainable lifestyle. So let me first start by asking, how many pieces of plastic do you think daily are found in the ocean? On average, 8 million pieces are found. So how much do you think is yearly coming into our environment as we continue to treat the world in which we live in as a trash can? Not to mention, over 90% of all plastic is made with fossil fuels. This means that the entire life cycle of a piece of plastic is remitting greenhouse gases. Now let me also ask, what do you think is the top most pollution producing industry today? Plastic? Landfills? Carbon dioxide production? No. Although oil is the top, clothing is second. 87% of all clothing ends up in a landfill, while only 1% are made into new garments. So now not only are we fighting plastic, but we are fighting something that we are using daily to live. Now let me also state that plastic isn't going anywhere and neither are the fabrics that we are using to make our clothing. So the question arises, what now? What do we do and how do we help? Well, that is what the Estuary Project is here to teach. As a broke 20-year-old college student in Ohio where recycling isn't directly accessible and is not always the cheapest option, I want to help show light on how each and every one of us can make a small change for a big difference. This will start with advocating with blog posts and podcasts that will teach anything from cleaning supplies you can switch to sustainable choices you can make grocery shopping from where you get your clothes and how you get rid of them to the dishes that are in your kitchen. Furthermore, these posts will include educators that will come on like professionals, other brands, and service groups to help further education. Not only are we going to be advocating, but we are going to launch and produce clothing lines like a tracksuit made from sustainable clothing or materials that will be the same price as name brand goods like Nike, Adidas, and Gymshark with a greater statement than just comfort. So it is hard to think about how climate change, pollution, and plastic are really affecting our daily lives because we aren't directly seeing its daily effects. So by meeting in the middle, like a natural estuary, the Estuary Project is going to meet our modern lifestyle in the middle and teach how each and every one of us can make that small change for that great difference. My name is Kelsey Campbell and I'm a junior here at the University of Finley. Let me help you make a difference that is bigger than the both of us. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, all right. Thank you for a well thought out presentation. I can tell that you're very passionate about this and I enjoyed your passion for this project. Um, I'm trying to figure out a little bit about how you get from your, your concept, your idea, your passion to what is the bridge between that and the actual product, which if I'm understanding is the clothing, mm -hmm. right? So what is your process for getting us from here to here? So basically the whole like bridge, so like I stated, like a natural estuary is where like fresh water, so like a river or something like that, will meet the ocean. So kind of meeting people in the middle with like, I mean you see everybody, we're wearing sweatpants and sweatshirts pretty much everywhere, right? So by creating this product that's the same price as what everybody else is wearing, but it's helping by taking like, depending on the materials I use, I can use recycled cotton, recycled polyester. I can do like, there's processes with manufacturing where I can take um, single use water bottles and create them into fabric to then make into um, the clothing itself. Um, so by making this, it's making a statement that it's allowing people to either make that choice of, am I going to kind of commit to that other 87% that's going into landfills or am I going to kind of help by using what, we're already, what we already have and um, making that statement that way. Mm -hmm. so Kelsey, great, great job and I don't think you're outside your comfort zone. <laughs> you seemed very, very comfortable presenting. I practiced so. a lot. So. Yeah, well, you, did, you did a wonderful job. Uh, again, kind of a follow on on, on that question. So. The, your, your vision is to actually to produce the clothing mm -hmm. for that's going to be more environmentally friendly, correct? Yes. 
So are you going to have to have a kind of a, a fashion portion of that too? Because people will buy clothing mm -hmm. not just because it's something to wear, but right. there has to be a fashion aspect to it too, which brings in an entirely different aspect of wow. I mean, oh, how, yeah. how, do you, how do you stay ahead of or at least current with the trends? So how can you ask, how can you kind of incorporate that or maybe you kind of take your ideas and you partner with somebody who does the, the fashion part of it and the production. Right, so some of our marketing strategies are going to be pairing up with people on social media, like for example, TikTok, Instagram, that kind of thing that are also already kind of in that sustainable area. Um, so it'll also help bring awareness to both the blog and the podcast, but it'll also kind of get them, we can do collaborations in that way where it's like, uh, the Estuary Project X blank who's going to come on to us who's in the fashion industry trying to fight these battles that we're presenting. Um, and another thing that we're going to be doing is just kind of um, losing my train of thought, but I'll just stick with that. So you think that just by having the Estuary brand on the clothing, mm -hmm. that, that's enough of a, an appeal that young people will want to wear this t-shirt, even though it maybe it's, it doesn't fit like a, uh, a Louis Vuitton, but right. it's like, I want to wear an estuary because it, it's making a statement that I'm standing up for the environment. Is that part of what you're marketing? Yes, a little bit. So one of our direct competitors is called Pangea. Um, they are a sustainable clothing brand that just makes track suits and they do specific drops. So it's not like they have um, their collection 24 seven. So they'll have specific colors that come out. They have a specific branding that will come out and you're only able to get Get those at that time that kind of plays into that um, fashion industry section of it um, so we'd be kind of trying to play along with that kind of to competitor with them but show that we're also doing a little bit more than their brand with the advocation side of things thank you all right next we have Paulina Bucaro and she is a junior pre-vet animal science student here at the University of Finley. Um, she would like to own her own veterinary practice someday. So are you able to come up? She was a little bit under the weather last um, day or so, so move slow, come on up safe. Can y'all hear me okay? Perfect, all right. So today, I would like to talk to you about Viroject. What is Viroject? It's this. This is a 3D printed syringe made entirely out of water soluble materials. So what is Viroject? It's an environmentally sustainable alternative to the current plastic syringe that's being used in veterinary medicine and human medicine. So the plastic that we currently use to make syringes is called polypropylene and it has a huge effect on the environment. We try to recycle syringes as much as we can but really only about 1% of that plastic goes back into another form of plastic so we're not really recycling up to 99% of it and most of it is going into landfills ending up in the ocean and it ends up having that either vaccine product in it or blood product in it that can also have an effect on the environment. Polyvinyl alcohol is a more water-soluble product that can, like I said, fully dissolve in water and leaves little to no environmental effect. So what makes this a good product? Why should we switch over from our you know, plastic syringe that we've been using for centuries to a new water-soluble syringe? It's unique. I've done a lot of research on this. There's no one that has fully researched 3D printable syringes, water-soluble syringes, and their effects really on the environment. So this would be something new that we could present to pharmaceutical companies such as Zoetis, which I would like to partner with to show veterinary companies this new product that they can use. There are scientific studies that have been done on polyvinyl alcohol, which is the product that I would like to use to create the syringe. You might be asking yourself, if this syringe dissolves in water, what about the contents inside of it? What, what can that do? 
without getting too scientific, there are coagulants and other chemistry things that I could go on about and be a nerd, but I won't, that we can add to the water that this syringe would dissolve in to make it fully environmentally sustainable. The syringe itself, while it fully dissolves in water, there are some particles left over, but a study done shows that microorganisms in the water will actually go on to dissolve the rest of it, leaving little to absolutely no environmental effect from the syringe. In terms of a regular syringe versus a water-soluble syringe with a new material that it's being made out of, there are concerns such as will other products put into the syringe dissolve it? In terms of salinity, the things like saline and other vaccines that you would put into the syringe would not dissolve it, and blood has little to no effect. And the syringe also does not have an effect on the material that you've put in it. I would like to do further testing on this, but I've only been working on it for about a month. So, In terms of sterility, you have to look at things that we already use to make things sterile, like autoclaving. Studies were done that polyvinyl alcohol products can go in autoclaves because their melting point is a lot higher than what our autoclaves show. So sterility would not be an issue if we were to switch over from polypropylene syringes versus polyvinyl, polyvinyl alcohol syringes. In terms of reducing waste and emissions, like I said, we're cutting that plastic down to almost zero. And when it comes to carbon emissions, there have been other plastic adjacent syringes created in an attempt to get rid of that polypropylene effect, but there's still a high amount of CO2 emissions that are made with the creation of the syringe and the disposal of it. In terms of cost, PVA solid filament is about $78.99 in terms of 3D printing, which is how I'm currently creating the syringe. Uh, polypropylene solid is around $100. You also have to factor in the cost of making these things. I'm hoping to one day be able to use a solid PVA that won't have to be in a 3D printed syringe, but that'll be a little farther away. In terms of production costs, I don't have a lot of details on that yet, but I'm hoping to get those soon as I keep working on this. Any questions? Uh, Pauline, again, gr great project, and it, it uh, enlightened me to a issue that I didn't know existed as far as the amount of waste of syringes. So. Uh, Maybe this is too technical of a question, I don't know, but uh, is a syringe considered a medical device where you'd have to have like a, uh, a permitting or uh, certain medical devices have to go through certain levels of, uh, of authority and like the FDA before you can sell them to the public. So would this be considered a medical device that so would have to go through that type of authorization and approvals before it you could market it? Oops, sorry. It probably would have to go through some sort of approval. I don't know if FDA is necessarily the overseeing committee that would have to look into it, but I'm sure that certain practices would not want to use it without having some overseeing company say, hey, this is safe. Okay. And then kind of the second question, is this a concept that you'd be willing to share with a larger company to partner with them if they had the ability to be uh, have the uh, infrastructure to, to do the licensing and the permitting and the production. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm actually currently looking into patenting this. My parents and I are working with a consulting company, and I already work a lot with Zoetis in the veterinary um, com sorry, veterinary clinic that I work at, and people who work in Zoetis have been interested in partnering with me to get this product approved and on the market if possible. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for the work that you put into this. I think this is a wonderful idea. So your target market is, um, who is your, can you define for me who your target market is? Sure. So right now I'm looking into veterinary medicine practitioners. Um, I would like to eventually get this ready for human um, medicine, but you have the issue where you need to pull a needle off this syringe, and that's not necessarily safe in human medicine yet. So for right now, I'm looking at targeting this to uh, veterinary doctors. Okay, thank you. Uh, great job, and uh, yeah, I, I think you did a, uh, an excellent job presenting this. I guess uh, my one question, if I, 
I got some time. So, um, what led you to, to look into these ideas of, of getting into it? Have, have you seen a lot of the plastic discharge in, in what you've been doing in school? Yeah, so I work at a veterinary clinic when I'm home on my breaks, and I calculated the total number of syringes that we go through a week, and it's over 1,000. So that's 4,000 per month, a lot per year, and all of those are ending up in a landfill. And when Professor Treadway told us about the marketing composition, I thought to myself, what's the worst thing that we have in veterinary medicine in terms of environmentally friendly things? And the first thing that came to my mind was syringes. Okay, I, sorry, I had one more question. Uh, so when you went about going, uh, figuring this project out, did you ever think about finding uses for the, the plastic as afterwards, or are they just not non-usable at that point? They would just be non-usable at that point because you would either have blood residue or vaccine residue in them. And so the idea is to have some sort of water tank that can then be disposed of by maybe the company that also makes them, have a division that creates and have a division that disposes of. Thank you. I do love a shameless plug. I'm not, I'm not the judge, but I do appreciate that, you know, when I speak to my students, she's one of my students in class, that, you know, they're very receptive to all the amazing things that they're capable of doing um, if they just put their mind to it. And there's proof. So those are the two competitors in our green competition, uh, or green division, sorry. So while we have some, I wish we had, like, some background music. We're not pulling any background music up, and I don't sing. Um, so we'll let them kind of tabulate their scores and to complete their scoring sheets. Um, I know Kirby's looking for another joke, so I got a good one. So my daughter shows horses, so I'm gonna have to put a horse plug in here. Um, so what do you call a well-balanced horse? Stable. Got it? Yeah, it's <laughs> a good one. All right. And then since we're talking about money, you guys are winning money tonight. All this effort is going towards dollars. Um, I know I spoke to Hancock Youth Leadership briefly, and um, I had been invited by Kirby, who um, helps lead amazing events with the Hancock Youth Leadership. And uh, speaking to the students, we were kind of breaking down how much the winnings would equal in hours worked. You know, so the hours they're working towards these projects, if you, you know, really think about how many hours they'd have to work to make this money is, is quite a bit. So let's talk about money on the next joke. Um, where do polar bears keep their money? Oh, I heard it. In a snowbank. You knew it. You got it. You got it. That was a good one. All right, how are we looking, judges? If I get two thumbs up, um, the next step is going to be our third and final division. So I know you're all eager to find out who wins, but we're not finding out until the end. That's how we keep you in your seats and eating the food that I don't want to bring home. Um, so if you remember that there's snacks back there. The final division is going to be our innovative business idea. So this doesn't have to necessarily qualify as a green initiative, and it wasn't someone necessarily from the high schools. So this is um, just an innovative business idea. And so the excuse me, there are three presenters that are going to be coming up. And judges, you have your scoring sheets ready. They are ready. Okay. All right, so first, I'm going to invite up Cameron Stein. He is a senior business administration major. He's inspired to teach others about the real life applications of 3D printing. Thank you. Hello everyone, <clears throat> sorry about that. Hello everyone and thank you all for coming here today. My business proposal is 3D printed self-defense tools. So my mission is to empower individuals to protect themselves by providing high quality, durable and effective 3D printed self-defense tools. All individuals deserve the right to feel safe and ease of mind when alone in public. 
So for the product breakdown, I designed my products to both be effective and easy to use. It simply slips over your fingers here and the bottom half provides a nice grip and also gives you more comfort as the user. While the top half is relatively sharp for the ears and is meant to scratch and deter potential attackers. This product is also very affordable as it is available for only five dollars versus many other competitors on Amazon and other sites that sell for around seven dollars up to fifteen dollars. This product is also very customizable as I can easily change the color and size as well making it a better preference for all users whether they need a larger or smaller size. I've also designed the product to be very durable. It is designed not to crack or break and withstand multiple uses as well. It is also fashionable and concealed. As you can see I can attach a keychain on it as well so you can easily attach on your keychains and slip it in your pocket without having to worry about it scratching you or anything like that. I plan on selling this product through online platforms as well as working with universities and making this a resource for all students to have free of charge provided by the university. So getting into the financials, this weighs 18 grams so it takes me 18 grams of plastic to make. So that only leaves me with about a 40 cents of material cost since the printer and all the other equipment I have is already paid off for. So it leaves me with a net profit of four dollars and sixty cents per tool. So the only reoccurring expense I'll have is the material which is roughly about twenty two dollars per roll and so I can make around fifty five tools total which gives me a break even point of about five tools per spool. It is also worth mentioning that as of this current design I can modify the infill in it as well. Right now it sits at sixty percent filled meaning it's forty percent hollow and also you can change the infill pattern with it as well. Right now I've decided to go with a triangular infill pattern which is geometrically the strongest shape to also withhold its durability. As, long, uh, as well as selling it through online stores and pushing it for universities to have a resource for their students, I also plan on taking it to local running stores and gyms as I think this would be a great pop product for them to have with them as well. Thank you all for coming here today and I'm open to all questions as well. Okay, I figured out the mic. Thank you for your presentation. I think this is a great idea. Definitely have done your research. Um, I have a question about, I guess, making this. So are you gonna like take orders and then print them as orders come in? Like how does that process work? So how do you get from you put this out there to I ordered one? What's that process? Well, for online sales, I'll make them print to order so I don't have to have all that stock left on hand. But when it comes to working with universities, it'll probably be something like they will structure like a deal. They'll have a X amount by an X amount of time. So then I will print accordingly to that. If they were to enter into stores, I would probably test the stores out with like a limited supply at start. So only around like maybe 15 to 20 of them. And it's also worth mentioning that they take around two and a half hours to fully print as well. So the time isn't that bad as well. Cameron again, uh, great job. Uh, what extent did you do like target marketing or testing with friends, relatives, uh, classmates? I mean have you gone out and, and showed the idea and what, what's kind of been the range of responses that you've got back from people that when you we showed them this and explained the concept. So so far I've showed this to a lot of my friends and family and a lot of them have actually asked one. I actually have an audience member here that uh, has one with her on her keychain. So they, they do like them and I have gone through some extensive testing with them and I've, I've tried and tried to break one and I, I physically can't. Um, so they're, they're very very durable and from the, uh, the response I have from the you know, community and friends and family, they seem to really like the idea, especially with how it's like fashionable. It's designed not to look like a normal self-defense tool. It's more concealed. All right, great job, Cameron. I, I, I think you've come up with something pretty unique here. Um, you mentioned it takes two and a half hours. How, mm -hmm. how many do you make in a two and a half hour time frame? Um, it'll take two, for two and a half hours it only prints one but I do have the capability of printing multiple on a print bed. 
which, so I think my print bed will fit a total of five, which will save me roughly three minutes on each tool. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but it does add up daily. And then when you look to go to the, the university route, mm -hmm. what kind of lead time and time frame would you be looking at? Is, is that something you've thought about of, you know, doing a mass order could, could take a substantial amount of time for you? It, it definitely would. That would be something that could be planned out well in advance. So if it is something, you know, if they do have a, a large order, I, I will have that time to be able to fulfill the order. And I also have two printers. And most universities, I know especially the University of Finley, they do have 3D printers as well. So I'm, I'm sure there is some sort of agreement there that you can come together and use their, their printers as long as you have your material. So when you, when you sell the items, will you provide instructions on how best to use them, like where best to hit somebody? <laughs> Well, every situation is going to be a little bit different, so I, I don't think I'd give any advice on exactly where to strike the, the attacker, but there will be uh, some packaging on it that has some, like, warning, some instruction, like, what, where's, what's the best lineup, like, the, the best fingers to put it on, and so forth. It, it will kind of guide the user to use it in the best way possible. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll take a free sample. No, I think those would be very useful. Um, next, we have Samantha Rausch. She's a University of Finley student um, who's a sophomore, inspired to create uh, her company because of her experiences volunteering at a nursing school and watching students do basic simulations. She also was good at listening to what the students wished they could learn um, in those simulations. So, welcome, Samantha. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you. So uh, last year I presented a singular product that I designed, and this year I would like to tell you about my company, Rapum Moulash. So my market background, nursing students and other medical schools perform simulations to help students learn better hands-on skills with practice. Um, they usually revolve around bedside manner, technical training, and they're hyper-realistic, scenario-based environments. These can be usually centered around a mannequin or an actor, and again, are focused on hands-on skills. So our problem is that many of these simulators that these students use are non-realistic. Um, they're also very expensive, and they can be very not so durable. Um, one of the problems with not being non-realistic is they have an incorrect feel when the students go to perform a hands-on, or a, a, I'm blanking on the word right now. When they go to perform one of these hands-on skills, the feel of the mannequin is going to be very different than when they go to take it and apply it to a real-life person in an actual situation. So currently our active solutions are we're performing better simulations um, by producing new products um, such as the IV sleeve that I currently have and we're allowing for a combination of live patients and mannequins. We're going to increase realism and durability by introducing silicone instead of rubber and our upcoming solutions are moulage which is uh, using special effects to create more realistic wounds. So these are things like burns, lacerations that students will have to treat and work that way. We're also doing consulting and we're doing training and event support as well as streamlined processing. So we're going to be working with schools and creating full products that you can have an entire simulation in a kit. And we're also doing, we've done a couple conferences where we've talked to people. So our market size, there are 2,600 nursing schools in the U.S., 300 in the states surrounding Ohio, and 155,000 RN graduates per year. Um, but we are hoping to venture in some to f into some future markets. We've been talking with some ENT training, 
Uh, we're going to work with some military training and get some hands-on practice there, as well as pre-veterinary world. And we have actually done some work with some education majors and done training for teachers and those going into the education field. So we have a $5 production cost on the IV sleeve, um, but our moulage is going to be different pricing for different sizes. Each of these wounds um, require various levels of work, various levels of painting, and they're different sizes. We're also going to charge extra for special requests. I have been talking with the school currently that was asking for specific um, custom illnesses such as like smallpox, which is very difficult to make and no other companies sell that. And we will be planning, from, planning to sell from a website. Do we have any questions? Samantha, great job again. Very interesting. We're learning so much up here as we go through each one of these things. So, uh, for your product, when the student applies either the band aid or does the procedure, how is the feedback going to get back to the student or back to that student's teacher about how good of a job the student did, either bandaging or inserting the IV or executing the procedure so that? They're not just doing it, but they're getting feedback as far as how well they're doing it. So many of these simulations are actually observed by the instructors, but we're going to, when we introduce uh, more live actors into the simulation, uh, the student will actually be able to get feedback on their bedside manner from the actor. So the actor sitting in there can tell them, hey, when you do this from a patient standpoint, it is a little intimidating or they can get actual feedback from their um, patients. Great job. My, my question is, based on the product itself, is there a, I'm assuming they're reusable, is there a certain number of times they could be reused until they need to purchase new ones? So our IV sleeve has been tested in a nursing school for um, the past over six months, and it's been good for about 100 uses, uh, without showing anywhere. Uh, the wounds that I have developed, they're all silicone based, so they're all reusable for as many uses as you can get out of them, um, as long as they're properly cleaned. Um, but because they're silicone, they're pretty easy to clean. Thank you, great job. Appreciate the time and effort that you put into your presentation. So my question is about your target market. So obviously you've talked a little bit about your target market. What is your thought in terms of your marketing strategy to get this product in their hands and how are you gonna let them know that you have it and it's available? Um, so I actually just attended a conference about two weeks ago where I was talking with uh, 12 different schools and actually was able to hand out some business cards and talk to them about my products and um, my services. And we've also been posted on a couple forums and I will be hosting a clinic sometime this summer. Thank you. Sorry, I was back drinking some water. Still some back there if you need to get some. We have one more presentation though. So this presentation is the final of the three for the Innovative Business Competition. Um, we have two because you're allowed to have, you could actually have a group of competitors who come up and work as a, a sole team. So we have Bryce Bartow who is a senior here at the University of Finley, an art major with an emphasis in children book illustrations. Um, and Jacqueline Paul who is a senior in operations and logistics. If you want to come on up. Hi, thanks for having us. My name is Bryce Bartow, as she mentioned, and this is my partner, Jacqueline Paul. Uh, our uh, business idea is the Little Demeter, which is a 
uh, meal ready to eat uh, consumer based uh, vending machines of sort, which is uh, an MRE, for example, is a meal that is already prepped and a sustainable uh, like ingredients that are already available to be added with like say water, add water and then that it would be ready for consumption and then the uh, this allows for food to be heated with a heating element which is uh, referred to as a uh, flameless ration heater which is commonly used in like military uh, products which those have certain he uh, like health and safety regulations so it would only be able to be marketed towards someone with say like a state ID or uh, it, basically anyone 16 or above. Um, the, uh, what is packaged in would be decomposable so only the um, utensils would need to be disposed of separately and then the rest would be um, already prepackaged ready to be put together in the meal. Why, the why Demeter? Uh, the uh, Demeter is the Greek goddess of agriculture and sustenance and which influences the branding for the vending machine. And another reason why I chose the Greek uh, influence was because before I came to the University of Finley, I went to Ohio University, and in Ohio University, or the greater area, Athens, Ohio, there is a large problem with the uh, with a like different housing abilities for the community, and that being a, like going through that community left a profound impact on how I viewed sustainability for human beings as a like just the ability to maintain food and safety. Um, more explanation will come in how it operates as a vending machine but um, particularly mainly focusing on things that could be preserved and enjoyed popularly such as those listed, um, then having different ones to choose from to customize a meal, along with different spice combinations to make it tasty. So how does it work? This is uh, more up for, I guess, uh, implementation, so as it works, it would be changed. So this uh, idea which is, would have separate food dispensers for each individual product to avoid cross-contamination and the bagging which would already contain the heating element and the utensils. So each individual product would be placed as the, uh, the UI for um, each, uh, I guess, individual customer would pick and choose which one they choose, like which ingredients they would want, and then the, the product would go down the line, seal it for consumption at a reasonable, uh, let's say like, if it's uh, packaged, you'd get about 10 months or so for an MRE. And then the, uh, once that's sealed, it'll drop off. And this is for, like I mentioned, for anyone that needs a, uh, any passerby that needs a ready to eat meal or unable to uh, meal prep or anyone that just just needs food in general. Any questions? Bryce and Jacqueline again, you know, very, very unique uh, product. I mean, things that we, we would never even think of. So, so great job on that. Uh, Maybe one specific question. It's so the the products would have no preservatives in it. Is that correct? It'd be the idea that um, like dehydrated vegetables or um, things that are already meant to last would be um, already packaged, and then you open them up to assemble the meal, and then that's ready to eat. 
Okay, so it'd be limited or no preservatives, which is kind of probably a, a big portion of your objective, I would think, so. Right. Uh, anything that would be like noodles or so, like anything that would have like a sauce, those would contain preservatives as well, if those would be deemed like a possible uh, ingredient for the product. Okay. Okay. And then the, the more general question is, you know, two of your target markets were vending machines like maybe at universities or uh, low income. So just talk a little bit more about how you might try to get your product exposed to those areas and how you might make it, uh, you know, get that product out to those, to those segments. So I, I believe that this would be, uh, first and foremost, it would go for the uh, the homeless population that needs the food the most. So the demographics of whether or not, for instance, like I mentioned, Athens, Ohio is the, that Athens County is the most impoverished county in Ohio. And then there's also like cities like San Francisco, Austin, Texas, like they, they need, uh, the, those specifically, they can have those with like signs around the area that would lead people towards those foods. And then also, um, just advertisements in general on like a podcast or a radio. Okay. Um, Tom kind of um, led into my question, but I'd ask, would like to ask you to expand on it a little bit. You talked about your target market. You just talked a little bit about um, how you're going to get that there, but what channels are you going to use to, your target market is pretty wide, like from homeless people to people attending a university, like in the vending machines. Like, are you trying to get it in the hands of like wholesale food companies who will then get it in the vending machines? Is it more just a, a business to consumer product? And how are you going to do that? Um, so we would primarily have to stock up in order to be the ones to stock the vending machines, um, but work with a um, somewhere to get our like ingredients um, distributors, and then hopefully be able to work with um, bigger places to be able to get into them. Um, so we have to talk with bigger areas in order to hopefully pass along. Also, like, getting into contact with, like, farmers or anyone that is producing the food themselves. Great job. I just had a question of, kind of, where would you guys see the pricing of a, an item like this? Um, so, even in a $7.25, that's still, like, under $10, and hopefully something manageable, um, we still have, like, nutritional value and, like, a fruits, veggie, um, base and then with the water like making it like warm and the heating element but um, then if we charge the consumer around nine dollars then we're not making like much we are aware but then um, we're still able to put that back into vending and use some of our own capital of course start off but under ten dollars hopefully and uh, as you mentioned uh, 725 is the average uh, MRE cost for the government as they uh, take them for the military. So I believe that with compartmentalization, it could probably be a cheaper price. So now the hard part is left to our judges um, for them to complete their judging sheets and for me to talk and not lose your attention. Um, reminder one more time, if you want any snacks or beverages, go ahead and grab them. Um, we need a few minutes then to have our placing set. Um, and during this time, while they're so busy, I'm actually going to talk about them a little bit. Um, they don't necessarily get paid to come and judge. This is something they they do because they really like to be asked to do things for free. Um, and actually, they're very well-known celebrities in the community. So I know Stoller is um, almost, how many students do you advise Stoller? A hundred or so. So many students have him in the sports um, management program, so around, um, yes. And then Kelly, 
I see your name in a lot of places. You're known around town for being the Golden Pear Voice, right? That's the company um, that you have. And then Tom, you have made your stamp on the University of Finley. You're the CFO here, or were, retired, um, and um, where I met you when I started coming in as, as an adjunct, um, very established and um, helped, I would say, do many things for the university. So thank you so much for who you are and what you do for the university and around our, our university um, in general. Um, but we want to thank you for the volunteering by providing you a gift. Um, so I have some of my students who are gonna bring up the gifts and provide a thank you gift that you can enjoy later. Not it right now, um, enjoy later. So thank you so much for your time. We know that your time is valuable away from your friends and family and other duties. And Graham, he's gonna take the judging over. They're gonna complete the judging and the tabulations. So hard part's taken care of, the judging is done. They're gonna figure out who's got first, second, and third place in the innovative competition. Um, with that said, uh, the dollar amount that was advertised that really brought the students in was the $1,500 for first place. And we elevated those high school students in what they were winning. So why not elevate the university students, which we have. So with first place, they'll be winning $2,000. Second place will be winning $1,500. And third place will be winning $1,000. And that should be enough to help your businesses start. Um, just throwing it out there on my way back to get a... Uh, bottle of water, I heard someone say, how can we get the um, promotional material or the uh, protective materials? How can we put an order in? So I guess we'll be needing to share some of that information after the event. So already finding some success where people are asking, how do we get that? How do we put an order in? So that's great. Um, and I would love to see all these businesses come to fruition. That would be amazing. And to know that we maybe sparked that interest and created that initial like want to do something good or do something positive in the community. So, um, with that said, we'll, we're going to announce winners next. Um, we'll go in the same order as they competed. So, high school division will be first. And with that said, I know they're over there busy making their mathematical checks and rechecks. So, we'll give them a couple of minutes. And as we present these big checks, these checks are not going to be able to be taken to the bank and cashed. They're going to be able to take a picture, and we'll have an area here for pictures, um, and afterwards, if they would hang around so we can make sure we have pictures with all the winners, um, that would be very, very kind. Did you guys already open your bags? Later. For later. Okay. No. <laughs> All right, sorry, we like to have fun. All right, so I'm looking back for my students to give me the okay that we can give the first winning checks out. Lots of math. You guys good? A couple more minutes, they're taking a couple more minutes. All right, so bad, you guys wanna hear, okay, another joke, one more joke to close us out. We can't end on a bad joke. All right. Um, what do cows read the most? Cattle logs. Yeah. You guys like that one? All right. Oh, here's a vending machine one. Since we just heard about vending machines and how we can get some MREs through vending machines. What did the football coach say to the broken vending machine? Give me my quarterback. That's good. I got these off the internet, by the way. These are not ones that I say on a regular basis. All right, I see them very efficiently working. Yes, we have like actually one, two, three, four, five doing math back there. So we wanna make sure we give the right people the right amount. Um, so. And then Cody, you gonna take some pictures of our winners? Yep, thank you. All right, closing. I'm thinking maybe the judges should come over and stand over here for the presenting of the uh, checks. Would that be okay? All right. All right, so just a reminder, we're gonna announce second place first and then the first place. Um, and in the high school division, the second place winner has a $750 prize. So, 
let's start with the high school division, even if they're taking time for that innovative business division. We're grabbing, grabbing the check. So high schoolers, be ready. I don't even know who won yet. We gotta wait until Savannah brings over. So we're gonna use this area here. You're just here for the jokes. Do you have any good ones? Do you have any other good, good jokes? No, I just wanted to see them. Uh, what is this? Oh, Kelly's got one. I have a joke. You got a joke? Uh, what is the Flintstones favorite city? You got to say it in the microphone. I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't know. All right. What are the, what's the Flintstones favorite city? Is that what you said? Abu Dhabi do. Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> All right. So somebody want to hold the check too? I know that was not good. All right. All right. So you want to hold this, Eric? Sure. All right. So. Second place, I would like to have Michaela Omen come up to um, get a picture and get your prize. Congratulations. All right. Where's Cody? Cody. All right. So, I don't know how you're going to, like, maybe shake her hand. Kelly, you want to shake her, or like, show a shake. And Cody's back in the blue. All right. So, Cody is back in the back of the room. So, I'll have you turn, Michaela, and we'll kind of shake your hand. One of us will. Okay. okay. Kelly will. And we're going to look at Cody in a big smile. All right. Congratulations. All right. All right. So students, we need to switch the checks. All right. I'll have you, I'm going to meet with you after and give you the actual amount. Now, big surprise. We had two competitors. So we have the other competitor um, winning $1,000 in first place is Mia Valdez. Someone hold and Mia come on up. And Cody. Oh, Cody moved closer. Oh, yep, we need that one. Thank you, Christopher. All right, congratulations, Mia. And we'll look at Cody there in that third row. Good job. Yes, don't leave because I'll give you your money when you're done. Congratulations. All right, so next we'll, we'll move on to the green initiative. And we did have two competitors in that division. So second place will be winning $1,500. And when they bring up the check and the winners, um, we will, we're patiently awaiting Christopher. You got running shoes on, right? Yeah. I know. Another student did sign up to do the check delivery. He was the, he was the bell ringer. Just to blame it on him. All right, so second place for the Green Initiative is Kelsey Campbell, winning $1,500. Congratulations. I don't know. Do you want, wherever you want to stand. Do you want to be over here? just awkward. All right. We can't help that. Here. Congratulations, Kelsey. Thank you. All right, let's get a photo. Second place. Good job. All right, all right, he's gonna trade you because the next check says $2,000. And the winner of the green initiative is Paulina Lucario. Let them take pictures later with them. Yeah, they can take pictures later, but we need one of the checks to rewrite third place for the business initiative. Should we shake your hand? All right. Yeah. Uh, elbow bump. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. All right. Here we go. Good job. Thank you, Cody. should be like thank you, guys. All right. Good. All right. They're eagerly rewriting one of the checks. So I'm going to have to wait until I get the go ahead because we're going to do third place first for the innovative business division. You're doing a great job, Christopher. You're like the utility player. That and those of you in the back who are eagerly writing those checks, thank you. All right, so third place is going to be $1,000, and winning third place is Bryce and Jacqueline. <laughs> you can't all let go. Don't all let go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh. Job. Good job. All right. And Cody's there, so I'll have you. Let's make it super awkward. Everybody. All right. Let's look at Cody there in the blue shirt. Camera. Very good. Good job. All right. Congratulations. 
<laughs> the check will be. Kelly says that that side of the check's a little lower, so we have to Photoshop. Are you good at that, Cody? All right, second place. Second place wins $1,500. Second place is Cameron Stein. Congratulations. Great work. Nice job. Thank you. Here we go, Cameron. Let's All right. Next so. Put these there in that third row. All right. All right. This leaves first place. So, first place winning $2,000 is Samantha Roush. Come on up. There she go. There she is. Thank you. I'll well, scoot that way, that way a little bit. Like everyone's this yeah. way. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nice job. Great job. Congratulations. Yeah, down the line. Good job. All right. So a huge congratulations to all the winners and a thank you to all. Please come back next year. We plan to have again next year in 2024. No more bad jokes. I'm done with jokes. All right. So, so those high school students, come find me as soon as we're done. Um, and the other students, um, I can meet with you in the back as well. So thank you again. Really nice right, job. Thank you. Really nice job uh, reading that. It was like, uh, nice job. Thank you so well much done. for coming. Yeah, it was fun. Thank